All you're gonna need today to make these delicious, whole, old-fashioned dill pickles with a little garlic in them is a gallon jar, glass jar. You can use a half gallon or so, but these are gonna be whole, so definitely you'll need a bigger jar. If you wanna go bigger and do a two or two and a half gallon jar, go for it. You're gonna need some unrefined salt. My salt of choice is Redmond, of course. You're gonna need a bunch of pickling cucumbers. You're also going to need about a half a gallon of filtered water. You'll also need some fresh dill. So you can use the flour and also some of the little stems, as well as something that has tannins. And that can be your blackberry leaves, you have those in your yard, if you have horseradish leaves, grape leaves, bay leaves, something like that works well to keep it crispy. And finally, you're gonna need some garlic cloves, probably about four or so will be perfect. And today what we're gonna do is we are going to make not just any kind of pickle, but we're gonna make a good old fashioned saltwater brine pickle. And make sure you guys stay to the end because I have so many cool things that I wanna talk to you and maybe you'll learn something cool about food preservation. So stay to the end. And congratulations to Deborah. She is the winner of our Alexa Pure water filtration system. It was over $500. So congratulations to Deborah. So if you guys are not signed up, and registered, go to offgrewwithdougandstacy.com because Doug and I are going crazy and we're giving away all these cool prizes, thousands of dollars, during the month of July. So go to offgrewwithdougandstacy.com to register. The first thing we need to do is get our jar sanitized. Since we live off-grid, I just use boiling water pouring over my jars. Or if you guys are living on-grid, you could go ahead and wash them with some nice warm water and then rinse them off and then they'll be ready to use. Now the first thing we'll need to do with our pickling pickles is you want to cut off the blossom end. So this would be the part with the stem. You don't have to cut that off, but if you want to, you can a little bit. But you want to cut off the blossom end where the flower was because they usually last longer and won't get as mushy. So you just want to cut it off just a little bit, just like that. So I'm going to do all these, they've been soaking in some cold water. And then on some of these, if they, the stem looks a little brown or bad, I'm going to cut it off too. And if there's any little brown spots or anything that you don't want, it doesn't look very good, you can just kind of just gently take it off like that. So very simply, you're gonna use your jar that you chose, and we're gonna start packing the whole pickling cucumbers inside of it. But before we do that, I always like to put a nice, fresh flour stock of the dill in the bottom. And then I'm gonna start packing them in. And when I'm starting to pack it in there, I'm gonna start adding some of my garlic. Do three or four cloves and I just kind of cut them up a little bit. And then I'll also put some of my sprigs of dill in there. Dill and pickles go great together. And did you guys know that cucumbers were part of Cleopatra's beauty regimen? <laughs> so we all need to be eating more cucumbers, right? <laughs> and I think the trick here is you wanna pack them pretty good so that they don't float up to the top. Adding my garlic, adding my dill. Now it's really important that we're adding our horseradish leaf or if you have a bay leaf or if you have blackberry leaves, any of those. This is my horseradish. I'm gonna put them in there because it helps with the crunchiness. In a big jar like this, I'll probably put, you know, four or five of the leaves. So if you use a littler jar, you know, maybe you can do two or three. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is the difference between fermenting pickles or just pickling them you know, with a vinegar? So those are the two types. You're gonna use a, like a hot brine with vinegar or you're gonna do a saltwater brine. So when you do the saltwater brine, basically you need you know, a few weeks in salt water and then you just let it set out and then what happens is the lactic acid builds up in here and then it's going to help to preserve it so that this will last you until the next season. So it's a way of preserving your foods, but it also enhances the vitamins and mineral content inside of it. It makes it more easier to digest. And if I had to pick between the two, because the one with the vinegar pickles 
it's heated, so it's gonna destroy some of the enzymes in it, so you're not gonna get that all that nutritional benefit from it. And also, these are gonna have a lot of probiotic benefit that's healthy for your, your belly and good for you putting those good bacteria inside of you. And the longer you let it set, it gets a lot more sour. So if you don't want it as sour, just maybe go for a couple weeks. But if you wanna go more sour, then go ahead and let it go a little longer. If I choose pickles, this is the one that I like to do, and I especially like these whole pickles because you can just take one out and eat it. It reminds me of when I was a kid. I used to go to the butcher, you know, and he'd slice me a piece of brown swagger and then you get one of these pickles and it was like such a treat and I just, it brings back such memories. Look how easy that was. So all I did was pack up. It's in there really good. So when if I tip it upside down, they're not, they're not coming out. They're packed really well because we don't want them to float to the top. So when you are fermenting them or we're salt water brining them, I'm gonna use, this is a gallon, I'm gonna use about a half a gallon of water. Unrefined salt. I use the Redmond salt, we're gonna do about four and a half tablespoons. And you're saying, oh my gosh, that's so much salt. Now, I use a lot more salt when I do pickles because there is a lot of moisture in here. So it's gonna soak up that brine over time. So it needs a little bit more salt to help preserve them. You do not wanna use a refined salt because a lot of times they put iodine in it, it will make your ferment not work properly. And the unrefined salt that I get from Redmond, which is mine here in the United States in Utah, I just love it. You can go to offgridwithdougandstacy.com and get a discount, I always get it in bulk. So you're gonna put that in there, about four and a half tablespoons, and then you're gonna go ahead and just stir it up so it dissolves. And also remember, when you guys are using this salt, you know, you're not just flavoring your food. When you use an unrefined salt like this, you are adding wonderful minerals to your body. Those are electrolytes. You know, you get trace minerals that the human body needs. So salt is very important. I mean, it's part of life. If your mineral content is not right in your body, you're not able to function properly. So it's really good that you're using good quality things. And I'm just gonna pour it over my pickles. Voila, look at that. How easy was that, huh? And then all I'm gonna do is put my lid on it, like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this somewhere where I can see it every single day because I'm gonna burp this thing. So every day I'm just gonna turn it a little bit because over time, the lactic acid is building up. It kind of builds up kind of little uh, carbonation. In Latin, they call fermenting fervor, meaning like to boil because it kind of starts building up the lactic acid, which is gonna do all that good stuff to preserve it and put all the good bacteria in it. And then you don't want to let any oxygen in. I just let a little of the air out and I'm gonna let it set for a couple weeks. And then after a couple weeks, I might taste one and see how it tastes. And if I want it to go set more sour, I'm gonna let it sit a little longer. And then when I'm all done with it, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into cold storage, either your refrigerator or down in the root cellar, and then I'll enjoy it for months and months. So right now we're preserving our cucumbers to help us get through till next year, till we have another cucumber harvest. And a quick little note, you don't wanna put this in direct sunlight, just at room temperature somewhere for your couple weeks and then try it. Now if we look way back in history, the very first form of preservation was fermentation. And that's what we did with these pickles today. We did it the old fashioned way in a saltwater brine. So that would have been the very first way pickles were ever made. And if you look at fermentation, the very first things that were fermented were probably like beers and wines. And of course yogurt. They had the, like the saddlebags made out of leather, you know, out of the camel hide, and they would put the milk from the camels or their goats or whatever, and then sitting out in the desert, and then all of a sudden, boom, then here you go, they went to taste it, and it was the soured milk. So did you guys know that in 1795, Napoleon wanted to feed his troops? You know, because he knew that they couldn't perform unless they were eating good foods. So he sent out and tell everyone if they could come up with a way of preserving food that they could win $12,000. This is back in 1795, isn't that crazy? That's a lot of money back then. But it wasn't until 15 years later that a man called Nicholas Appert, and he is what I guess you could call the father of canning and invented a way to preserve food. And he got the money too. <laughs> And then we look up into the 1800s and Louis Pasteur, the father of pasteurization, he did a lot of things. I mean, he also 
figured out the science of fermentation and what it does. So that was kind of neat. So you know, we're talking about food independence here for all you guys. You guys are, I know you're wanting to learn, trying to preserve your food, whether you're fermenting or you're canning. In World War II, I think it was in 1943, the women all got together. I mean, they were taking charge of their food systems. Millions of the housewives, they were growing these victory gardens because they wanted to be part of that war effort to help everyone. Everyone was growing gardens and they would get together as a group, as a community, and that's what we need to start doing. Getting in community. Instead of just you by yourself doing that and doing the canning or doing the fermenting, you guys need to get together with friends, you know? We need to kind of start this little community movement. And I'm talking to you, I have a garlic <laughs> ball that is tight as could be, I can't even get it apart. And I read that these ladies, during World War II, they took over, you know, they were gonna start canning their foods so that they had food security for their family and their friends and everyone around. They canned in 1943, four billion bottles or jars of food. Can you believe that? Four billion. So here we go, guys. We have a goal, right? You guys are in charge of your health, your body, what's going in your mouth. Making these pickles that I just made, this didn't take me, I mean, you guys were here with me. I just did it and they're done. All I have to do is wait and that's it. And then they're done and I will have some nutritious foods, especially since I fermented them. So here is our, our goal. We need to start getting with friends, maybe teaching friends, start doing some of these skills that we've lost just in a couple generations. And then that way we can be in charge of our food. Now for a lot of you guys may not grow your own pickles and that's okay. You can get them at the store. You can get them from a farmer's market. You can get them from your local farmer that has a little stand on the corner. Support Community Supported Agriculture or CSA. You know, get a membership there. But you know what? We want to decrease getting our food sources, especially our produce from other countries. Because you guys know that your food average, it goes 1,200 to 1,500 miles to get here. It's gonna lose all its nutritional value. You know, if you get it from someone local, you're gonna get so much nutrition from what you get. So, you know, our goal here is to support our local community. We wanna to work together, support the community, keep where we're getting our food local, really support your local area. I think it's so important. So your job, we got four billion jars to can, right, guys? And we're gonna support our local people and our community to get our produce from them, and then you're gonna preserve it until next year, and then we're all one working unit. We don't have to rely on anybody outside of the country. So leave a comment below. I know you guys have lots to say. This was awesome. Let me know if you're gonna make your pickles. Let me know if you're gonna can four billion jars. I would love to hear from you and have a great day. We will see you on the next one. Make sure to check off grid with Doug and because we have lots of giveaways. So go and sign up if you haven't. See you soon.